Hi, my name is Jonas and I'm a PhD student in the seismology and wave physics group at ETH Zurich. Even though we don't usually feel it, the ground underneath our feet is in constant motion due to various natural and man-made seismic sources. One of the main natural seismic sources is the open ocean. In this video abstract, I want to quickly introduce a method that we use to locate these noise sources using finite frequency sensitivity kernel inversions. One mechanism that generates ambient seismic noise is when two ocean waves overlap, which in turn create a pressure wave that travels vertically down to the ocean floor. This then creates a tiny displacement everywhere at the ocean bottom, the so-called secondary microseisms. Since the source strength depends on the wave height, the distribution of noise sources changes constantly, particularly if there are storms. We can observe these secondary microseisms by looking at seismic noise data in a frequency range between 0.1 and 0.2 Hz. To get information about where the noise sources are located, we look at the cross correlations of seismic noise data. If we had a completely homogeneous source distribution, we would have a symmetric cross correlation. In contrast, if the source distribution becomes more heterogeneous, for example a stronger blob on the right hand side of the station pair, we can get an asymmetry in the cross correlation. So the asymmetry in the ambient noise cross correlations contains information about where the dominant noise sources are. But how can we use this to create a noise source distribution model? Let's assume we have an observed cross correlation like the synthetically created one here. Since secondary microseisms are dominated by surface waves, we look at the expected surface wave arrival time window in the causal and acausal part of the cross correlation. We then take a measurement, namely the logarithmic energy ratio, that is the natural logarithm of the ratio of the energies in the expected surface wave arrival time windows. The next step is to forward model a synthetic cross correlation for a starting distribution, which in our case is usually homogeneous in the ocean. The forward modeling is very efficient because we use pre-computed wave fields and spatially variable grids to reduce the computational cost. We compare the two measurements by calculating the misfit, which we then try to minimize in the inversion. By applying adjoint techniques, we can compute the finite frequency sensitivity kernel, which tells us when increase or decrease in noise source strength will give us a more accurate model. In this synthetic example, the sensitivity kernel tells us to increase the source strength in the North Atlantic. This corresponds to where we put the dominant noise source to forward model the observed cross correlation. For multiple station pairs, we sum up all the sensitivity kernels to obtain a gradient which we then use to update the model. By repeating this process, we iteratively reduce the misfit and improve our inversion model. Let's have a look at a synthetic test for multiple station pairs, shown by the green triangles here. We use the target model shown here to forward model observed cross collisions for which we then try to invert. After performing 10 iterations of our inversion scheme, we obtain this noise distribution map. As we can see, all the dominant noise sources in the North Atlantic, specifically the one off the coast of Europe, are contained in the inversion model. Finally, we apply our inversion scheme to a real dataset for the first six days in October 2019, as this was when Hurricane Lorenzo was moving towards Europe, causing strong sources in the North Atlantic. The inversion models showed a strong daily spatiotemporal variations of the secondary microseismic sources in the North Atlantic over those six days. Additionally, we compare the models to ocean surface pressure maps, which, in theory, should correspond to the sources of secondary microseisms. Both the models and pressure maps show very similar features. The main takeaway from this paper is that we are able to rapidly invert for the noise sources of the secondary microseisms on a regional to a global scale. Our plan is to create publicly available daily noise source maps. If you want to learn more about this, feel free to check out the paper in GJI or contact us if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching.